were painting a command squad. Hello, I'm Marcel. And I'm Mrs. Snakeworks. This is the command squad we built in a previous video. We want to change the bases on these, so let's do that first. Using a bit of sellotape, we mask off the top of the base, just making sure the rim remains tidy. We probably should have used masking tape and not sellotape, but we are quietly confident we will get away with it. Oh, by the way, this is the last video in my original Horus Heresy series. It will, however, be the first video in a new Horus Heresy series. So this one's doing like double duty. The reason for that is we've finally decided on a legion, you see. We now have four bases all masked up and ready to go. There is a fifth marine, but his base doesn't need changing. To get the bases ready for spraying, we've mounted them on this piece of wood. I think I found it in the garage somewhere. Here is our texture spray of choice, Stone Effect by Mastodon. Wasn't he a character in Beauty and the Beast? Then goes tromping around wearing boots like Gaston. Ah, it's Gaston. Taking a trip out into the garden, we then sprayed the texture onto the bases. We didn't go overboard, just a quick spray on each base. I wonder what the hell they use to make this stuff. We let the texture spray dry overnight to make sure it had dried and then peeled the masking off. It's a lovely feeling seeing it come away, leaving a nice sharp edge. I was a little worried the spray might have bled under the mask, but it didn't. How did Kylie put it? I should be so lucky. Oh, I think that song actually means you're not lucky. Anyway, let's carry on. Luckily, we had only tacked the marines onto the bases with a tiny amount of glue. To remove them, we slid Andy the knife in the gap under their feet. Now, I'm not sure how it happened, but when removing the last one, I slipped and slit the tip of my thumb. I guess this is going to be a thing now we're painting world eaters. Also, now I know how they felt when they take the blood in the Thing movie. I was told when removing marines from bases with a knife, you have to cut yourself. Apparently, it's a rule of thumb. I'll get my coat. After a quick trip to a &E to have his thumb sewn back on, we were left with four marines, all off their bases. They all looked drunk the way they're laying on the bench. To attach the marines to the new textured bases, we used some thick Gorilla Glue Gel Super Glue. This stuff is so thick it doesn't even run out of the binizzle. Nozzle. Or you just take it off and use a poking stick. That is what you have written. B-I-N-I-Z-Z-L-E. How was I to know that's not a word? It is a word now. We now have four marines all mounted on their bases. That head from the build is still in the background. Marcel seems to have forgotten to put it in my bits box. Now the models are all reassembled, we can begin the painting. To make the models easier to paint, we like to mount them on these painting handles. We have five of the original version and one of the newer butt plug looking variants. I do need some more of these to be honest. To prime the marines, we used Citadel White Scar in a rattle can. Word on the street is that you can use Halford's white primer and save yourself some money. My worry is that the Harrods, Harrods? My worry is the Halford stuff will be just too thick when it goes on, because it's for cars, right? Do any of you guys know? Here are the results of the priming. It went on really well. It covered well and is a nice white finish. We're actually very happy with it. Next, we need to mix up a wash. Five parts Lamian Medium, five parts water, which isn't shown, one part Drakenhof Nightshade, and one part Nuln Oil. We mixed all those together in this nice little plastic pot. I'm not sure where it came from. It looks a little bit medicinal. It might have come with one of Snakeworks Jr.'s Calpol bottles, or something medicinal like that. Using a large-ish soft brush, we then give all of the marines an all-over wash of our dark blue wash mixture. If you see it starting to pull anywhere, try to wick it off again with an empty brush or a piece of tissue. Here we can see the marines without wash applied. You can see we haven't washed the shoulder pads as they're going to be a different colour. Blue. Now looking back, we probably should have done the blue bits before we done the wash, or did the wash. 
did or done. But it doesn't make a huge amount of difference anyway. Our next colour is Pro Acryl White. They say this is the best white on the market. We didn't use a brush for the white application. We grabbed some old packing foam, ripped it up and grabbed it with a pair of reverse tweezers. Reverse tweezers are really handy and I thoroughly recommend getting a pair. We then give the marines a damn good sponging all over with the white. This works similar to how a dry brush does. It leaves the wash in the recess but also highlights the upper parts of the panels while also giving them a textured effect. I think the sponged look is a nicer look than the dry brushed look. They both have a nice texture but I think the sponge just takes it. But you could use a dry brush if you so fancied. Here we can see all the marines with the white sponged on. We think they look really nice. Although they are a little too clean for world eaters I think. For the blue parts we start with Cantor Blue. This one has a little white splat on the lid for reasons unknown. Not for reasons unknown, I told you. Using the Cantor Blue thinned in a couple of coats we then paint all the blue areas. They comprise of the shoulder pads, the backpacks and the quarters of the banner. Oh and the blue bits on the shields. It would have been a lot easier to paint the shoulder pads and the backpacks separately but we didn't know we were doing world eaters at the time of assembly so we couldn't. But we will however remember for next time. Well hopefully don't let me forget please remind me. With all those blue parts base coats applied we can now move on to the next stage of painting. Our next paint will be Black Templar. We are about to attempt an experiment. I'm famous for my experiments in the kitchen. Marcel is super keen on those. Using the Black Templar, we then paint all the cabling on the Marines. There is some on the arms and legs and also some on the chest. Usually we would paint them silver and then wash them. This time we are just doing this. Do you want me to say that bit again? Nah. That's the experiment. I'll let you guys be the judge on if you think it worked or not. Why has that light gone off? Here we can see the marines with their front pipes painted. I think in future we might leave these parts white, like the armour. What do you think? Anyway, our next colour is Vallejo model colour black. This is in the new pot. I hope they haven't gone and changed the formula because the old one was perfect. Using the black we block in anything that will be painted in a metal colour such as silver or gold. Bits like the swords, shield frames and the odd pipe here and there. Here are all the marines with their bits blacked out. Blacking in can take a while but we feel it's worth it in the end. Our next colour is Teclis Blue. Using the Teclis Blue we repaint the blue areas leading the Cantor Blue in the recesses. I'm not going to lie, this took two or three thin coats as the colour jump was so huge. It probably would have been a better idea to use this blue as the base, then wash that and then reapply this. But live and learn, eh? With all the techless blue applied, the blue areas are pretty much complete. The Cantor blue does look nice in the recesses and this blue is so smooth it's almost criminal. You've been hit by, you've been hit by a smooth criminal. Now I do miss Michael Jackson. I remember going to see Moonwalker at the cinema in what, 1988, 1989? I remember finding the music video part at the start really, really boring. I just wanted it to end so we could get into the meat and potatoes of the movie. Actually, that needle scene in there might be where my needle phobia came from. Ah, here we <laughs> That's what it looks like. Ah, here we go. It's scale 75 necro gold up next. The first of our metallic colours. We paint all the parts on the miniatures that we want to be gold with this paint. All the decorative banner elements, the marines helmets, the shoulder studs and one pair of shoulder pad trims. I think that was pretty much it. This is the base gold applied to all those areas. Marcel said it looks more bronze than gold but a lot of people who saw early pictures of these seem to like it so there you go. Now I'm also tempted to do NMM next time although it will take a fair bit longer. We shall see. 
Next up, Vallejo Model Color Vermilion Red. Actually, no, we're going to use Vallejo Model Color Flat Red instead. Using the flat red, we paint all the parts we want to be red. There's not many, just the flappy bits on the banner, the little circle on top of the pole, and the marines' balls on their swords. Not sure what those are. With the red parts applied, all our base coats are pretty much done. We can now work on the details. Turns out there's one more bit to base coat, the bald marine's head. Let's get to it. To do the face, we shall be using Gilliman Flesh contrast paint. It's pretty simple to paint the face. We just give the entire thing a coat of the contrast. There's a black mark on the top of his bald head, but we shall deal with that later. It's still there looking at it now. We never did sort that out. Remind me to put that right sometime. Whoops. This week, we have been mostly watching Sonic Sledgehammer. He has done a wonderful painting guide on the World Eaters 2, which I thoroughly recommend checking out for yourself. Start throwing this all over the model. It's now the time for some NMM. Are you ready? Let's go. First up, model colour black. Using the black, we block in all of the sword's blade area. I thought we already did this, but apparently it still needs doing. Painting those swords black gives us a nice starting point for our NMM. I'm not the best in the world at NMM, but I find I can do a decentish job of it now, as opposed to a few months ago. Nowadays, I do like to do a sketch of my NMM weapons and just shade where I want the shadows and highlights to be on the miniature. It's by no means artistically perfect, but it's easier than working them out on the miniature on the fly. Also, I don't know who the guy in the bottom right is. Feel free to give him a name. Hello. These will be our colours of choice for the NMM. Black, blue, green and white. We begin by mixing a tiny amount of blue-green into the black and applying it to where we want to begin the highlights on the blades. We then add a little more blue-green and do the same but in a smaller area. Then the same again with pure blue-green. Then it's a mixture of blue-green and white. And finally white on the brightest parts and then also edge highlight all of the blades. That has left us with this. I think they came out quite nicely, if a little small. If you want a bigger and better proper video on my method, let me know in the comments below. We'll see what we can do. We're doing decals now, so we need some gloss varnish. Using an airbrush, we gave the Marines a couple of thin coats of gloss varnish. Using a rattle can might have been quicker though. The Marines are now ready for their decals, or decals, or transfers. You can see the shine on them. Now some people don't bother glossing their miniatures before decals, but I find it does really help with the final aesthetic. I'm interested to hear about how you guys go about applying yours. Please let us know again in the comments below. This is the World Eaters decal sheet. There's lots of nice decals on here. We like to have a good poke about and see what we fancy using. After deciding on what we like, we then create a decal plan. Please excuse Marcel's crew drawing. This tells us which decals we need and where we need to put them. It's easier than making it up on the fly. Now I used to just cut them out and then try and find somewhere decent to put them. I've wasted a fair few decals in that way. Decals, decals, well, transfers. To cut the decals out, we're using Andy the knife. I used to use scissors, but they were a lot less precise. Some of these decals are tiny and we don't want to be ruining them. These are all the decals we want laid out into their separate groups. Shoulder pads, knee pads and decals for the banner. I'm not going to show you me putting the decals on as we've done a whole video on that specific topic. You can see that video here if you fancy it. So fast forward the application of the decals and we have this. All the decals are applied. They came out quite well and none of them broke which is a nice change. Next up it's Windsor and Newton Galleria Matte Varnish. We give the miniatures a coat of this matte varnish with the airbrush. I use it thinned with water. 
Usually we would use airbrush thinners with the airbrush, but this stuff prefers just the water. I think maybe using airbrush thinners affects the final finish, maybe. But water seems to work fine, so we use that. Some chipping now, and our first colour will be Dark Rust by Vallejo. Using a sharp brush, we do a few choice chips here and there. We don't like to go overboard, as there are a lot of effects to add and they all stack up. Here are the marines with the chips added. You can also see we did some scratches on the shields too. I think they have come out nice. Chipping always seems to look best when you use two or more colours. Using just one colour never seems to look quite right. I mean it's okay, but using more than one really elevates the look. Our next colour will be white. Using the white we add a few more chips and underline the bigger rust colour chips, giving them a highlight. You can spend a lot of time highlighting chips, but I find it's always best to just concentrate on a few key obvious chips. Next we mix a little white in with our techless blue. Using this mix we add a few chips to the blue areas and again highlight the bigger rust colour chips. All that chipping work has left us with this. I think they came out quite nice. I do, however, think I might tone down the chipping on the blue areas next time, as I find it looks a little dirty or messy. I might need to think about that one, you know. Next up, we are making a 50-50 mix of Druki, Drucky, 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 Violet, and Agrax Earthshade. Using this mix, we then apply it to all the gold areas on the miniatures. This helps shade some of the recesses and gives it a hint of a nice purpley hue. Now looking at the wash when it's dried, you probably wouldn't even notice there's purple in the mix. It's a very subtle look. It's great for gold. To highlight the gold, we shall use Elven Gold. Using the Elven Gold, we then give all of those areas a big chunky highlight. This helps brighten the gold up, as it was quite dark after the wash. This is how the gold looks now after the elven gold highlights. It's a lot brighter. I think this recipe looks a little more bronze than gold. I couldn't however tell you why though. Maybe because it's a little less orangey and more brown perhaps? Next up we take a little model air chrome and mix it into the elven gold. We then add some final highlights to our gold to give them more punch and contrast although it does tend to desaturate it a little. Here are the marines with that final highlight applied. I have one more key step to add, which brings the saturation back and keeps the highlights. Well, mostly. What we are doing here is adding a Gryphon sepia wash to all the gold areas. We usually show you the pot, but it would appear Marcel didn't take the footage. Oh, we lost it. Either is possible. I guess I don't really care what happened. I feel like I must have a better answer to why I think you didn't take the footage. I don't feel like I can continue with this now, now that I'm thinking about what my answer would be. With that sepia filter applied, we now have a bit more life and colour in the gold. I think it looks... huh? I think it looks a lot nicer now than before the filter, but I guess it is subjective. I think I might have dyslexia. I used that same filter on my custodies back in the day. Although I haven't painted any of those guys in a long time, we might need to do something about that. Recently, Snakeworks Junior and I took a trip to the range where we purchased a big pack of cheap brushes. I wanted these for basing and washes. We also purchased a fan brush, which I want to try for some weathering. Expect to see these in an upcoming video soon. soon. Okay, it's flat red now. This bottle looks 3D and not flat, so I feel there's a lie there somewhere. We reapply the flat red to all the red areas, leaving the shade in the recesses. There's not a lot to do, just the banner trim and the ball on top of the pole. Did I ever mention shading the red? I think we used null oil for that, but I have no memory of doing it in any of this footage. Give me a second. <laughs> Ah, okay, I've just had a little look through it, and it turns out we shaded it with the same wash as we shaded the gold, the purple and brown mix. I guess we were so efficient, we didn't even notice we did it. We're going to mix in a little flat flesh to the red now for a highlight colour. 
Using this mix, we then apply it to the edges and high points of the red areas. It's quite a subtle colour jump, but I didn't want it to look pink. I think red might be the hardest colour in the world to highlight. I want to know how you guys do it. We are going to use some noosh with a mix of these two colours now to do some more weathering. Using this mix we created a few rust streaks here and there. If you go overboard you can clean up again but we have noticed it's not as easy to clean up on a matte varnished miniature. So next time remind us to do this at the glossing stage. Here's what the marines look like with these streaks applied. I do think this looks nice on the white myself. I still think oils are the best medium for weathering with, as they seem to be a lot more forgiving. But I do think I need to do some more experiments. Turns out we forgot to paint the metal parts, so we shall be using Model Air Gun Metal. It is a nice metal colour. There's not many metal parts to paint, mainly the detail on the backpacks. We like Model Air Metallics, as they're very smooth and they cover very well. Here we have all the backpacks and metal areas ready to be shaded. I'm going to apologise here as I forgot to get footage of the paint being used. Again, actually no, hold on. It's this one, Nuln Oil. Using the Nuln Oil, we then give all the metal areas a wash. It's a pretty easy step and one we enjoy. With this wash on, we just have to wait ages for them to dry. We don't want to accidentally smudge it with our fingers. Have you ever messed up a miniature while touching it when the paint is wet? Hair dryers can be helpful with that, but sometimes they do make things dry in funny ways, especially washes. I wonder why that is. Back to the white now. Using a steady hand and a brush with a nice tip, we paint the eyes white and try our best to leave a little black rim around the edge. Easier said than done. I think that's an 80s rap song. Yo, homeboy, it's easier said than done. <laughs> our eyes are all now whited out and ready for the next stage. Over the years, I've tried many different eye painting methods. But again, I'm still undecided on which method I think works the best. I think probably the glowing style, but tomorrow I'll probably change my mind again. For our eyes, we shall be using blue-green again. I like this colour. Again, using our steadiest hand and a fine brush, we paint the eyes with the blue-green. Here, we can see the eyes painted with the little black line around the edge. A bit like eyeliner, I suppose. What is the difference between eyeliner and eyeshadow? Is liner what you literally draw on your tips of your eyelids. That must be really hard to apply without poking yourself in the eye. Anyway, if you want to get your hands on your own command squad to choose how you paint the eyes on, then you can check out the link up here somewhere. There's also one down in the description below. Here we have a random Nuln oil clip. I think this is the one missing from earlier. Next up it's Achelian Green, the colour nobody can pronounce. Also, I think it's more blue than green. Remember that, as I want to talk about it later. Using the Anfelian green, we then give the eye a little wash. You can't use too much, or you'll just drown out the eyes. Just a little touch is all that's required. Then we go back to the white. Using the white, we just add a little dot in the back corners of the eye to act as a sort of reflection of sorts. Again, you need a steady hand and a sharp pointed brush. If you cock up, you need to tidy it up and redo it, which can be annoying. Here we have the marines with their eyes painted. A little too blue, and they really should have been green. Next time, I think I'm going to use a lighter green base for the eyes. Especially not a wash that says it's green, but is actually blue. Now what we've done here is the bases. We were unhappy with how they first came out, so we used the same technique from an old video. We just haven't painted the rims yet. We will put a link for that in the description below and one up in the corner if we have the spare cards for it. It's blood effects now and for that we are using Tamiya Clear Red. Using a sponge we then dab on the clear red. Some people like to go mad with this, we tried to be a little more subtle. Also add it to areas where you think blood would most likely to hit and splash such as weapon blades, fists and areas near where blood would be spurting from. I don't think you'd get much blood on the back of the marines for example. 
Well, unless someone behind you exploded. Now, recently, I got this postcard from Warmag. I've got one of their shirts on now. Anyway, on the back, it says, Dear viewers, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Harry. And remember, Mrs. Snakeworks has said that when we hit 10,000 subscribers, we're allowed to order a Warhound Titan. So please hit that subscribe button and we can hit that target ASAP. A postcard also has this QR code here, which I don't know if you can make out, but feel free to scan it if you wish. I don't know where it'll take you. If you are enjoying the content on the channel, then please consider joining us on Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here. You can even become a channel member, which is becoming all the rage these days. Again, there's a link to that in the description below somewhere. Anyway, that's enough e-begging, let's continue on. We also add a little yoo-hoo glue to that Tamiar clear red to make a stringy gory effect. Be careful though as this stuff wrecks brushes. You can't see it much here as it's very subtle but it works very well on chain weapons and big close combat weapons like lightning claws. I'm actually tempted to make a whole video on blood effects if you fancy it. If you do, let us all know in the comments below as usual. Or you can even come and discuss it in our friendly Discord server, which is not behind a paywall. There's a link to that in the description below or up here somewhere. We look forward to chatting to you there. Next up, it's Scale Color 75 Black. I like this as it's very matte, but any black will do. Using the black, we then rim all of the Marines. I like matte rims, as glossy ones look too much like toys to me. We like to apply this in a couple of thin coats. Now you might prefer a glossy rim. At the end of the day, you can finish your rims however you like. You might even prefer dirty brown rims. While we put our paints away, we just want to dye a huge loving shout out. <laughs> I feel like that's not what Marcel wanted to say. <laughs> While we put our pants away, we just want to give a huge loving shout out to the following channel members and Patreons. Dan Yallop, Lee Blackley, Donald, Pine Tree, Bob Zilla, Charles Marlowe, Andrew Merrington, Nick Ellingham, Bryce and Bantams, Timbo, Zven V, and our newest member, SDKFZ Forge World. Thank you all so, so much for supporting us. We couldn't do this without you guys. If you want to join and have me read your name out in the roll call, then you can use any of the links in the description below to sign up. Before the marines are done, as it were, we need to add these little magnets from Warmag. This means they can be safely stored in a box. They just stick on the underneath of the bases like, well, stickers. Oh sorry, this t-shirt? Yeah, it came from Warmag. Now this video isn't actually sponsored by Warmag, but I do really like their stuff. Anyway, let's check out the finished article, shall we? And here we have it, the fully painted and complete Mark VI Command Squad. We had a lovely time painting these and we think the white and blue World Eaters scheme looks very nice on them, especially the blood. Going forward, we might change our gold recipe and we will definitely be going a bit greener with the eyes, but they're small issues. We think the NMM came out quite well on the swords and it was nice to get a chance to try it again. Hopefully we can do more of this in the future. I was a little worried the banner would be overly busy with all the decals on it, but again, I think it works, especially with a bit of weathering on there. We are interested to hear what you guys think and please let us know if you plan on using any of these techniques. Here are all of the world eaters we have painted so far. Not many. There's this command squad, the Contemptor Dreadnought we painted a while back, and a Praetor, who I was testing paints on. I think next, we have to repaint 40 tactical marines. Done. If you want to see more videos in this Horus Heresy series, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching.